Well, world leaders are mourning the passing of former Pope Benedict XVI, appraising his devotion to the church. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI died on Saturday morning in the Mater Ecclesia Monastery in the Vatican. For more on this, we're joined by Emeritus Professor of Theology at UNISA, Professor Klippi Skritzinger, and UNISA Head of the Institute of Gender Studies, Professor Itumeleng Mutwakhai. A warm welcome to both our guests, and thank you so much for joining us on our program this morning. I'd just like to get um, your thoughts, uh, Professor Mutwakhai, on the passing of the late Bo Pope Benedict. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Ndogos, and uh, good morning to your viewers, uh, and Happy New Year. Um, I think for Catholics and for the, the Christian Church as a whole, um, what we call Christendom, is, is that uh, Pope Benedict XVI has contributed immensely theologically, and he has also contributed immensely in terms of his his role uh, as a pope um, during his his lifetime, actually, as a pope, he one of the things that he did was to admit uh, a lot of um, Anglican clergy that decided to want to become Catholics as uh, uh, as priests, uh, which is which is something that uh, was so extraordinary about him. And uh, he saw himself also as a reformist. Um, he saw himself also as someone who needed to rekindle Christianity in, 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 in the West. And his, his, his cry was that, look, Christianity in the West is dwindling and uh, there has been uh, a lot of what we would call relativism that has, has emerged within, within Europe. And, and therefore, he saw himself also as someone who can revive Christianity in, in Europe. And of course, uh, one of us, we cannot... Um, Put aside was that as as um, a prefect in the Vatican, uh, he played a very fundamental role um, in as the head or what you call the, the the prefect for for Catholic doctrine. And out of that, of course, um, he he was a watchdog, if you can call it that way, for for for, for the Vatican in ensuring that uh, the Church. And as a whole, or the Catholic Church as a whole, uh, remained in the straight and narrow in terms of uh, Christian or Catholic uh, theology and Catholic doctrine. Um, but also there are controversies around him, and uh, we should not shy away from those controversies. Uh, his controversy within and what he saw uh, liberation theology in South South America as as, as a problem theology because for him it somehow politicized the image of Christ and, um, and put Christ right in the middle of politics, rather than seeing it as a theology that was from the grassroots. Mm. Um, but also, you know, um, one of the things that we can also say about uh, Pope Benedict, actually, is that he ushered uh, Vatican II. He's a, he's, the, he's a cardinal who actually was uh, during uh, Pope, um, Pope Paul VI, uh, John the 23rd, and of course, uh, played a very uh, important role during uh, Pope uh, John Paul II. So you you you, you have him in, in in this stream of of these popes, and uh, because of him, actually, uh, as a as a theologian uh, of of his time and uh, ahead of most of uh, the theologians at, at the time in in the 1960s. He actually and ensured that the type of Vatican documents that we have today, mm. uh, whether it's volume one or volume two of the of of, of uh, the Vatican documents, is that he, he together with uh, your uh, John Baltazar and Edward Skillybergs, uh, Karl Rana, uh, Karl Kaspar, and, and and so on, who were the leading theologians at the time, influenced the type of theology that. Uh, we speak of today that is uh, the Second Vatican Council or the, the, second, docu the uh, second Vatican documents or theology that came out of uh, the, that, that, that time. And, uh, of course, these, these encyclicals also actually give us a, a, a view into who uh, Benedict was right. and how he viewed his, his spirituality and his theological outlook. Right, and I, I, I want to circle back to some of the criticisms um, that were uh, directed at the late uh, Pope Benedict. But Professor Kritzinger, I'd like to bring you into the conversation at this point. You know, 
uh, Pope Benedict was described by some as a shy intellectual um, known for his scholarly uh, contributions to the church, um, but also coming in as a successor to Pope John Paul, uh, a very charismatic individual in the papacy. Um, how were his sort of intellectual contributions received by the church, would you say? Good morning to uh, the listeners. Um, yes, um, he was indeed um, a shy introvert um, German professor. He, he writes in, in one of his uh, books that he actually wanted to be a real professor. That was his dream. But he was also a church, uh, a priest, later a bishop, archbishop. Um, and so he was a, a bishop and a professor at the same time. And so that, that shaped his, his whole theology. Now, he's, uh, he's written more than 60 different uh, books, if you also count his encyclicals. So he was a prolific author and uh, extremely bright. Um, and as President Mutohai has said, in the 1960s, he was on the, let's say, reforming um, edge of, of the Catholic Church. Vatican II, but afterwards he became more of a narrow interpreter of Vatican II, uh, where there were some who were pushing for a wider interpretation. He was on, he became more and more conservative, you can say. And I think it, it often happens, hey, when you get responsibility in the church or any, any institution, you, you, you can't have those sort of strong radical views that you had when you were 30, because you're now responsible for a whole church. I mean, we must remember that the Roman Catholic Church is huge. I mean, and it is so diverse, so many countries, so many different tendencies within it, that if you're responsible to, to manage that, it's a huge challenge. And he admitted that he was not a manager, that management was, was his, his weak, his weak side. And so he was saddled with the problem of the sexual abuse, um, uh, uh, sort of scandals that came out, which his predecessor, aging and aging and not retiring, um, left on his on his lap in a sense. So he spent days and, 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 and weeks and months trying to sort out, reading through all those sexual abuse documents and studies, and he didn't want to do that. That wasn't his, his strong point. So I think he was conflicted in that he was not a strong manager and certainly not a charismatic figure as his predecessor was, as a Polish pope and a, a lover of people, a communicator. Um, he was uh, an introvert and he, he made a huge intellectual contribution. Mm. His three books on Jesus of Nazareth are sort of classical studies in solid Christian theology, which Protestants and Catholics alike um, can appreciate and, uh, and benefit from. Um, but his, the focus of his encyclicals was love, the three uh, sort of virtues of faith, hope, and love. He, he spoke, he wrote about God is love, and uh, hope in the hope we are saved in hope, and linking in truth and and love. Mm. So theologically, he made a, an amazing contribution. But in terms of management, that is, I think, why he resigned. He just couldn't face the the, the tension and the challenges of managing this this huge church with all its diversity and, and polarization. Uh, and so he decided to do the honorable thing and, uh, and resign, which was pr probably what he will be remembered for most, was the, you could say, humble way in which he withdrew from this challenge, that I, ca I can't manage this. Mm. He didn't want to do what his predecessor did and sort of just um, you know, slowly die in the chair of St. Peter. He decided that he's going to pass this on to someone else. Yeah. I mean, while we can acknowledge that he may have, you know, lacked in, in, in leadership skills in the sense that he really struggled when it came to the management of the church, the issue around the allegations of sexual violation and abuse were longstanding, even as a cardinal under, Saint, under Pope John Paul II as defender of the Catholic doctrine, these were abuses that he had to have dealt with, um, that he had to have, you know, had to have a look over. Why couldn't he carry that sense of skill, that ability, with him into the papacy, I wonder, uh, Professor Motohai? Is that a fair assessment? 
I think no, it's not a fair assessment because as a prefect uh, who was uh, responsible for overseeing the Catholic doctrine, is 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 was to look at the notions of heresy, to look at whether uh, those that are entrusted with the Catholic faith in this regard will be bishops, would be uh, cardinals, would be priests, deacons. Um, and, 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 and religious life, uh, those who have consecrated themselves into the religious life, that, uh, that was his role. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that his role was to ensure that, uh, as Catholics in general, mostly those that were entrusted with the faith, that were able to, to stick to the straight and narrow, if you want to put it that way. There were those that are supposed to have been responsible for for, for such issues, and those were uh, cardinals that were responsible for for priests and bishops. Those were the cardinals that were supposed to have dealt with this issue, but not but not uh, at the time, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger. I think it is not a fair assessment. And I think to his to his credit is is that he 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 faced it re- uh, uh, head on. Um, he realized that not only is he uh, en- entering into the big shoes of John Paul II in terms of his charisma, but also he brought a different type of a charisma uh, in terms of a leadership, and that one was to face some of these things head on and uh, to to admit when you you have done wrong, and and he did that. He he, he admitted the wrongs of the Catholic Church in with regard to dealing with with issues of sexual abuse. But he even went further. Even though those 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 that said, but he didn't even uh, you know go further than dealing with with the issue. I, I will say that um, as as a as a pope, he he had to uh, understand one thing. He is. Uh, the first among equals, and and because he's first among equals, he cannot in any way uh, impose himself in a diocese mm. which he is an equal of in terms of the the episcopal responsibilities and and so on. So he he hoped in a way that his brother bishops would deal with it because let's remember this that um, one of the roles of of a pope is that he is the Bishop of Rome. He's not just only the leader of the entire Catholic Church, but he's a Bishop of Rome, mm-hmm. and therefore he's responsible for the Church in Rome. And uh, and when you speak of the Church in Rome, you speak of a local Church in Rome. So he he, he had to deal with all of those 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 uh, stratas in in his in his uh, uh, leadership as a Pope. And right. I think it is. Uh, it, it is it is both ways. It's both ways. Right. Well, well, Prof. As we wrap up our conversation, we look at the Catholic Church today, and and perhaps some would say that it has taken on a much wider interpretation of uh, of Catholic doctrine. Uh, we're seeing with a lot of the pronouncements that are coming um, from the from Pope Francis. We're seeing with a lot of sort of the changes that are coming into the Church right now. Would you say that the legacy, or well, part of the legacy of Pope Benedict, is that in a way, he paved the way um, for the Catholic Church as we see it today. I would say yes, he did. He did exactly that, and I would also say that uh, perhaps many people are not even aware of it. Is that in his papacy, uh, Benedict the Sixteenth dealt with a long-standing theological issue: what happens to the stillborn kids or the kids that die at birth? Or the kids that die before they are, bap- they are baptized and so on. He dealt with that uh, a very important issue, which the Catholic Church said it was they were just in limbo. And he came and said, no, those kids go directly to heaven, and dealt with uh, that theological question, right? And 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 settled it. And I would say that uh, in the longer term, we, we are seeing uh, the fruits of of Benedict uh, the Sixteenth as a as a pope in 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 terms of how. Uh, Pope Francis is dealing with some of these issues, especially reforming uh, the Curia and uh, 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 the Vatican itself. Right. Prof. Uh, Kritzinger, your thoughts? Yes, I think so. He um, he did make a, a reforming contribution, not as much as many uh, Catholic and Protestant uh, theologians and Christians would have wanted. Um, he he, he, he presented the Catholic Church with a real problem of having two popes. 
uh, a pope and a pope emeritus. Now, this hasn't happened for, for 700 years that a pope re- actually resigns. So that did um, pose a challenge in the sense that the, the polarization, in especially the American Catholic Church, um, the people who were appointed, the, the nuncio that he appointed for the United States, made some very con- conservative appointments which polarized the church further which makes it very difficult for uh, Pope Francis, who is trying to manage this polarization. He's trying to open up certain things, but Pope Benedict Emeritus was seen by many uh, more conservative Catholics as sort of their icon and their representative. He's still there. He's still our Pope. That made it more difficult for Pope Francis, but I think the theological contribution of uh, Pope Benedict uh, XVI is beyond question. And this question of the credibility of the church in a relativist society where anything goes, your truth, my truth, sort of postmodern, there's no truth anymore really, just up to opinions. His contribution was highly significant in saying Jesus of Nazareth, whom he wrote about extensively, is the point of reference in the heart of, of Christian faith. Well, I'd like to thank both of our guests for coming on to our program this morning and sharing their insights with us. That was a Professor of Theology at UNISA, Professor Kipi Skritzinger and UNISA Head of the Institute for Gender Studies, Professor Idumeleng Mutwahaye.